I'm Ashlyn. I'm Emily. And Marla is not quite here yet, but we want you to mansplain baseball elsewhere. Oh, oh there's look, Marla. Look, there she is. Hi. There's Marla. Oh, uh, we literally yeah. just started, so you've missed nothing. Did you guys do hockey? Um, already? no. No. Not We're priorities. doing baseball first. Okay. Um. So, so this week, I'm toasting with sweet tea. This is the first time I've oh, had a wow. non-alcoholic toast at night. Just saying. It's but yeah, day. I'm toasting with sweet tea. And I'm toasting to take care of yourself because some days are just fucking shitty. So take care of yes. yourself when you can. And check in with those you love. Um, make sure they're okay. I am toasting with a truly lemon. Um, and I'm, I guess, toasting to people being flexible with plans. So you'll notice like today's episode's a little out of whack, but we've all had stuff going on. So I'm going to record as long as I can and then, um, let the ladies take it over. So, um, but just being flexible with the order of the show, being flexible with life, um, just being flexible with everything. So. And shout out to Mother's Day because they're the most flexible people I know because nothing ever goes according to a mother's plan. Amen. <laughs> I say this as Marla joined us late <laughs> because of a child. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. What are you toasting with? Um, I've actually got this. Um, it's Ooh. a 19 Crimes wine. This is a California red. And this is Snoop Dogg's uh, edition, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, it, the 19 crimes is the one that's like AR, like you can scan it with your phone and it like pops up and he tells you like his story and stuff. Um, his wasn't as in depth as some of the, like they have like throughout history, like criminals and stuff. And some of them, it's a voice actor, obviously, but they were like really getting depth and they're really cool. Um, but I'm trying this one for the first time. I hope it's good. Um. And if not, I still love you, Snoop. It's okay. And I'm going to toast to the Minnesota Lynx, whose hoodie I have on, because our season starts Friday. So, WNBA Yay. this week, guys. Season pass Yay. is $17. That's not hard. I need I to do that. I want to try and watch. I know I won't get to watch a ton of games, but, like, for 17 bucks, whatever. Yeah, and you can go back and, like, watch replays and stuff, too. So it's Yeah, really like, it'll be totally fine. And sometimes... Sometimes that's even, I mean, that's easier because, like, all the sports are going on right now. Like, we'll talk about on yeah. Mansplain Hockey Elsewhere, yeah. like, the Stanley Club, Cup playoffs start tomorrow, May 11th, which is probably when this is going to come out. So, like, it's it's all going, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, baseball. Um, so, baseball, we had, um, I'm going to skip to the Tigers just real quick, because my update's really short. We went two whole games this week, but now we're in double-digit wins. Woo-hoo! I think they have, like, a point two seven four win percentage. Wow. It's <laughs> it not is, zero. It's not zero. Um, and technically, they split the weekend with the Twins because that third game got rained out. So, you know. Um, and we beat the Red Sox once, which are on the top of the MLB power rankings. I don't know why the Red mm -hmm. Sox are on the top of the power rankings. Um, like, I mean. Because the world I makes guess, no sense. Right. Like, they, they, they have been coming back and winning a lot. But also, it's just weird. Nobody would. It's a matter of that. time. Who knows? It's only I a matter also of time. Yes. I also would not have predicted two no hitters in like what three days. Cause we talked about John Means mm -hmm. on Wednesday and then Wayne yeah. Miley did it on Friday. Friday or Saturday. Yeah. One of the two. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. My weekend kind of ran together cause it's so busy, but yeah, I'm right. kind of over no hitters. I don't really care. <laughs> They've lost their Sorry. pizzazz. Like I literally, like I'm just too much like, of a good thing. Uh, it's kind of like home runs, That's like they're really exciting no when no hitter in college baseball every weekend. Oh, so it's like whatevs. Um, yeah, like I just don't care anymore. I mean, good for That's them. Rude. But also Go pitchers, like good for you, but I'm just like. <laughs> whereas normally when it's like a no hitter, like 
I'll like Joe Musgrove's when it gives me the little alert. I'll go watch it if you know, as long as the Braves isn't like soup. Like if it was the Saturday Night Phillies game with the Braves, I wouldn't have flipped it to watch a no hitter. But if it's somebody else, I'll like flip it over to watch it. But now I'm just like I don't give a shit. It's fucking Wade Miley. I don't give a shit. I'm sorry. No, Wade. It's the Reds. Whatever. Uh, we do care about Jacob Degrom only because he's on a horrible team. You can come to Atlanta any day, Jakey. Um, but he is on yeah. the I. I think they put him retroactively on the IL for mm-hmm. tight, yeah. tightness, but they said the MRI yeah. was negative or something. So, yeah, hopefully you come back after our series. I mean, get well soon, but not that soon. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks, we should miss him. So thank you very much. Um, Stay well, yeah. but not too well, like Emily said. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, take your time coming back. Um, and then Jack Clarity hit a home run. I thought we had yes. only amazingly hitting pitcher, but no, Flaherty hit one. So good for him. He must have been listening to Coach Trev's hitting tips or something. Must have. I saw that. He kind of like, he didn't like super pimp it, but he kind of like a little bit pimped it a little bit, which was obviously cool. my magic I mean, rubbed off on him when he was in Pittsburgh. That's probably yeah, what it was. That was that it. makes sense. The goodbye. Was he the one that got heckled? Who yeah. the heck were they heckled? Yeah, that was See, the one that my nine-year-old was heckling. So. Yeah. See, that was it. Flaherty, like all these players, like Flaherty, Harper, like mainly those two. But like, um, I want to hate them, mm-hmm. but they keep being good people. <laughs> It's so can we make it really hard? Like, could you kick a puppy or something to help me <laughs> like, hate you? Just, just Jen. be the villain. Like, you know how just, like yeah. Soto. I don't even think Juan Soto's a villain. I think he's probably like a nice guy. But he's like, yeah. y'all don't like my shuffle? Let me shuffle harder. Yeah. Like, no, they just keep doing nice things, and I'm like, dang it, I can't hate you. Um, but. Yeah, I did not watch a lot of baseball this week. So if anything else happened, somebody feel free. Um, Max Scherzer set a Yankees record for the most Ks against a Yankee lineup. He had 14 Ks in that game against them. What was that? Saturday? Saturday? Friday? Yeah. One of those days? Um, well, I don't remember what day he pitched. It all runs together. But, yeah, that's a – because, I mean – when you think about the Yankees, I mean, that's a there's been a Yankees for a long, long time, and nobody has ever had 14 Ks in a game against them. So that's pretty cool. And um, they are on the they're on the theory. up the upcoming like the they're doing the opposite of what the Dodgers are doing. Like the Dodgers yeah, are that. hot, and then Bob Nightingale jinxed them. Yes, <laughs> now they suck. Kind of like Jeff Passan uh, jinxed the Royals. Yeah, Passan Passan. I still don't know how to say it right because Jake Storielli messes me up because he always makes fun of his name. So, anyway. Yeah, so, I'm going to okay, go by what okay. Cass in. Okay, great. So, anyway, um, that's bad. That's horrible. I should not pronounce his names. But I'm doing a baseball podcast and did not watch a full game this week. So, don't expect much out of me. Um, anyway, he cursed the Royals. Mm-hmm. You don't see that? Like, he was like. Yeah. It's almost May, and they have, like, I don't know if you said they had their best record or, like, the best they've ever had going into May or something. And then they've gone, Phew! Dodgers have yeah. gone. Phew! Did I you say five series, series for the first time since, like, 2017 or something? 2017. Yeah. Said the, the picture five. that MLB put with that tweet, by the way, was amazing. Was great. Because the picture, They're literally, it, every Dodger that was it. Kirsch and JT and all of them have a look on their face like there ain't no fucking way. Like it was the perfect, perfect picture. Good job, social media person for picking out that photo because it was awesome. Um, but Yankees yeah, I it? mean, yeah, you know, no, I mean, oh, sorry, you can go. Oh no, go ahead. I was just gonna say somebody. On the Braves did something that no one has done since a Yankee, which goes into our Braves updates. 
But I don't didn't know, know if they were. I have paper. that one. Is uh, that no. yeah, since I know Babe Ruth? It's like he has one point three OPS, but um, one point one ERA. So like nobody's done that since the Babe. The yeah. So he is better. He he is as good as Babe Ruth. Confirmed. Got it. Yeah. Perfect. Probably better. Love that for the break. Probably better. Actually. I don't think we need a DH in the NL anymore. Like, oh, no, <laughs> yeah, my God, good. Good. Oh, good. I've been telling y'all, hitter pitchers hitting is exciting. So come on. So the Braves. Um, I have in-depth things for every game, but I I'll just kind of go into. Um, we swept the Nats. We hadn't finished that game when we were recording. This was. On Thursday, we finished the sweep, um, and it was awesome. Smiley got the win. He's now one and two. Uh, Ozuna got a hit, some RBI. Um, Nate Jones got DFA'd this week. He's this week. gone. He is he gone, 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 gone. He got, like, yeah. straight. What I is it, It's not dismissed, but he is gone. Gone like a freight train. Right. Yeah. Um, Friday's game happened. Um, I don't really want to talk to about it really? very much. Um, Smiley yeah. exited. Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. No, it was Charlie, not Smiley. I'm dumb. He exited after like two outs. Um, it was four hits, six runs, two walks, but his earned run average went down because it was a, there was a pass ball so his ERA actually decreased from 508 to 498 and he's now 2 and 2. So congrats Charlie on uh, figuring out how to do that. Um Carl yeah, Edwards everyone Jr. who had him like in fantasy leagues was like, "Well, I didn't think he did that bad." And we're like, "Eh, but he kind of Yeah, the numbers look <laughs> great. Well, <laughs> not a math pod. Numbers apparently can lie sometimes. So Carl Edwards Jr. also came in in that game, and his um, he gave up three hits, three runs, a walk, and his ERA was 81 at the end of that game. And then he got DFA'd the next day. So that's what happens there. Um, Kazmar got optioned again. We recalled Yasiel de la Cruz, but then he got sent back to Gwinnett like today, I think. So, all righty. So Saturday, we that's did not, eventually end anyways. up winning. Um, eight to seven in a four in like a half hour game, something like that. It was 12 innings of pure insanity. It didn't get done till like 1230 at night. Did I stay up? Yes. Did I want to? No. Did I also afterward flip to the Dodgers Angels game because the Angels almost made history and coming back from a 13-0 deficit? Yeah, I did do that also. But like, listen, I'm a slave to the baseball. Apparently I have no other life. And uh, that's. That's how it went. So, Saturday, we did win 8-7, like I said. Freddie scored the first runs for the Braves on a home run. That was the start of him proving to us that he was not broken, even though he's not smiling. Because even though we all know he would be prettier if he smiled, it's it's okay. It's all right. Um, He's got zero in the car. Which is, or at least he was as of Saturday night. It's Monday night now, so maybe he got a point one or point two by now. I don't know. Don't don't fact check me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ronnie got hit in the seventh inning by Coonrod, which is apparently a name. Um, it was the mm-hmm. first time that he had faced Coonrod since April 11th when he had hit a homer off him. So mm-hmm. and. You can see, like, Bowman and a lot of other people tweeted the um, picture of the pitches, the pitch frame, whatever that's called. And you can see the two pitches he threw at him, obviously intentionally, um, and hit him in the hand. with, And he got a left pinky contusion, um, had a little Band-Aid, I guess. They didn't say what character was on the Band-Aid. A little disappointing, but he did end up um, going back the next day somehow miraculously didn't have a broken yeah, I was surprised he played <laughs> he was yeah. in pain like it it was and, yeah. and nobody did anything about it nobody no I wanted somebody to rush the mound 
Sock just full of quarters is what I say. say no one listens to me. <laughs> like, just say something. Chirp at, at the very least, chirp at him. No, nothing happened. So that was disappointing. Yeah. Um, and then Sunday completed the series win, 6-1. to one. Waskar, the future MVP, Enoa, got the win. He's now 4-1. and one. His ERA is 2.23 as of last night. Freddie went three for three with a homer last night, and mm-hmm. it was much more fun than Friday's game. So, uh, what else happened? Oh, Panda made history. We talked about it a little bit before. Oh, wait, no, we didn't. I lied. Sorry, I'm all friggin' screwed up. Panda. <laughs> we had... all are. <laughs> it's a day. It's been a whole last day. Um, he's got .3 war so far. He got a pinch hit home run. In Saturday's game? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. He, yes. So he tied us. He's tied. what yes. sent us to extras. Mm-hmm. He Thanks. has four pinch I mean, hit home runs thanks. in 17 at-bats so far. And the four mm-hmm. pinch hit home runs is a franchise record for a season. Yeah. So the man's making history. Shout out so, to our Panda Power shirt. Go check that out. It's very yeah. cute. I got to order that. Um, I, yeah, I, yeah. I tried to. I didn't my- order it on Saturday because I just was like I didn't think about it but I need to get that because I have a feeling we're going to have a lot more Panda home runs so it's going to be relevant all season because if he's already tied in 17 at bats and it's like May 9th 10th 10th I think we're going to have lots more hope so anyways um uh, Adrian's is also killing it he yes. on Saturday, I believe, went three for three, got a walk and an RBI. He has zero errors so far up to Saturday night. I didn't check on yesterday's stats, but I don't think he got one. So yeah. man is killing it this year. And he came out of nowhere. <laughs> He's <laughs> At doing least for me. So good. He's like becoming one of my favorite players to watch yeah, on the and, Braves, too. Oh, like Saturday morning, he and his partner announced that they're having a baby due in november i think so so happy for him it's awesome he was the one that became a citizen in january yep. um, he's having a big season already like yeah. life-wise and baseball <laughs> big year for adrianza so i think that's the broad um broad recap that i had for the braves i did want to say quick that I was looking into the stats of the MVPs for the National League for the past five years to see, like, is it like an MVP curse that, like, the next year you suck or something? And yeah, it is it's not. Like a... <laughs> so, oh, okay, good. yeah. Sweet. Bryant <laughs> um, went, he won in 2016. And then in 2017, his stats were a little bit lower, but he was still pretty good. Stanton won 2017. In 2018, still. Once again, stats a little bit lower, but still awesome. 2018, Yelich wins. And then 2019 comes in second in the MVP voting. So there you go. Yeah, so and then, not sign- there's not the hangover like with the yeah, World Series. Yeah, it's not like cool. a, a drop-off. Um, he only lost in 2019 to Cody Bellinger, who did all of the things that year. And then the next year was yeah. 2020, which kind of... Like, his totals dropped, but his, like, percentages of stuff, like his batting average, OBP, slugging, like, those went off a little bit, but not, like, insanely. Like, Bellinger was still yeah. really good last year. Obviously, he was the MVP. Of yeah, the yeah. Thing, yeah, we so. all remember that. Um, yeah. So, right. um, but hopefully, yes. Freddie has broken his curse of whatever yes. um, was happening. So, yeah. turning point. I'm here for it. I really think Saturday's sure. game was a turning point because I, at no point after we were down three times, did I think we were going to win that game. I'm just yeah, completely it, honest. It did, not did feel like one of those, like, once we finally did win, it felt like one of those games where you're going to look back and be like, remember when everything, like, changed? Yeah. Kind of like in 19 when Donaldson and Musgrove went at it, and it was like, okay, yeah. after that game, everything changed. Yeah, like, that was the Same switch that flipped feeling. in everybody's head. So I and hope it's true. I hope yeah. like, in, like, three months, I'm still right. Hopefully. And Rio Muto did get hit in the hip on Sunday. 
um, with like a mm-hmm. curveball or some shit, which is not enough. Yeah, I'm like eighty nine miles an hour. Yeah, I don't condone beaning, but I will condone someone charging the mound like Donaldson did and maybe punching out yeah. somebody because the Phillies need yeah. to fucking know their place. So, yeah. and all the teams and- are hitting Ronnie. Stop it. Yeah, and I will say, and I know, here's my thing, because I know people are going to be like, oh, they just have to pitch him inside. Like, okay, yeah. You know what? I think they probably are, Ed, maybe like 75 to 85% of them are just trying to pitch him inside so that they don't give up a home run. Maybe Coonrod was trying to pitch him inside so he didn't give up a home run. You can tell me that it's not intentional. Okay, I'll be on your side. You know how you make – and he they keep missing, okay? They suck. They suck at pitching inside. They keep missing. You know how you make it better? Hit somebody. But they pitch better inside or they don't fucking do it. Like, yeah. And he still hits homers when he, he's argument, pitched inside. So, well, it wasn't, it wasn't on purpose. He was just – they were just – the only way to pitch to him is inside. Otherwise, you can't get him out. Let's okay. See. Well, pitch do better. it better. Pitch better, do dummy. It better. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're not asking for a lot. This is your job. You're a yeah. major league pitcher. Throw the ball over the plate. That's your job. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah. Um, I didn't watch Saturday's game until extra innings because yeah. I don't. I, mean, I just was, was like, a game David itself, were watching so. a TV show. Yeah, <laughs> and I was just kind of like, oh well, you know, whatever. We're good. I had this like weird confidence, like, oh, we're good. We're gonna win. No worries. Whatever. It's fine. Um, and then. Yeah, it got really exciting. Also, I was around an extra inning, I think, this season. Yes, yes. And I think, I don't remember which one. I guess it was, I don't know if it was, I guess it had to have been the 12th, I guess, that we didn't allow. Or, I don't know. It was one of, one of the innings was also the first time we didn't allow a run to be scored in extra innings. Yeah. Like, whichever one it was. I don't remember which inning it was, to be honest. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I was thinking the 11th, but that could be wrong. Maybe it was the... Well, I think they I don't did know. score in the 12th. Let me see if I can just quick bring it up. Yeah, they scored but, three in the 12th. The 10th. The 10th, they didn't the score. The okay. did we, we each got a run in the 11th. They got three in the 12th, and we got four. Yeah. So, okay. There you they go. Didn't that was, was, they didn't score a run till What? Oh, no. I'm sorry. It just cut out. I was like, wait. It, I had to scroll to get to the beginning of the game. And I was like, wait a minute. Those are all zeros. That doesn't make sense. Because they scored early. They got two in the yeah. first inning and one in the second. So that was also, I think that was a stressful game. And I saw, and then yesterday's was nice and easy. Like, okay, this is a win. Yeah. Thank you. Like, we just needed this nice, easy win. And somebody tweeted, I promise I'd give you credit if I could remember, but I don't. But somebody tweeted, like, Yanoa is getting up there with, like, Soroka. And used to be freed. Hasn't really been freed this season. But maybe it'll be freed soon after his really good start. But, like, you, I almost in my head, like, when he's pitching, I'm almost already like, okay, it's a win. Like, I have that much confidence in what he's done and is doing. And I'm like, okay, that's a win. That'll, that'll be an easy one. I can't remember the last so, time we had, like, Three pitchers that made us feel that way. And we still don't. <laughs> so. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, um, I know, right? But yeah. hey, maybe soon. Maybe soon. Maybe. Get the Roka back. Um, together. Yes. And, yeah. I hope Morton. I hope that I'll stint. I think that Charlie Max thing was just a fluke. I, I really I, do. I, yeah. I mean, it everybody's going to have a bad start. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, everybody's going to have one. I mean, for fuck's sake, Clayton Kershaw just got carved up the other day. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it was like the worst start of his career. Everybody has one. It's fine. At least it's Everybody? May and not October. Yeah, exactly. So, Let's do it now and not in the NLCS, please, and thank you. Now, not then. Um, okay, so AL team updates. My Houston, we, okay, so this wasn't quite done when we recorded on Wednesday, but they played the Yankees Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They lost mm-hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday. They did win Thursday's game. Happy um, birthday, Altuve. They hit, yeah, Altuve hit a home run. Jordan Alvarez hit a home run, and Maldonado hit a home run. Um, Jordan Alvarez is kind of on fucking fire right now. He's, like, <laughs> literally being compared doing, to Ted Williams. 
And like the stats, yeah, like, like reaching records like faster than any left-handed hitter. And, yeah. In like yeah. hundred years. And I learned today from uh I don't know if it was talking baseball or waking shake that I was listening to, one of the two, hashtag ad. Um, but they were talking about Alvarez was originally um drafted by the Dodgers. Oh wow. And he was traded for somebody I don't fucking remember, but it was somebody like, obviously nobody remembers. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And Friedman was like, yeah, that might be one of those trades that goes down. Like mm, maybe I, maybe I lost that one. Like maybe, <laughs> maybe I we got a little bit that. pleased. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Alvarez hit two home runs off of Cole on um, that game on Thursday. He was the only runs that Cole gave up. And so people are kind of putting him in the group with G-Man Choi, who also has Cole's number and, like, hits the shit out of him all the time. So Cole pitched really well outside of those two home runs that he gave up. And then Chad Green came in and was Chad Green because he kind of blows, or at least every time I watch him, he kind of blows. Maybe Yankees fans know something I don't. Maybe he's good when I don't watch. Maybe it's me. Um, And let... A whole bunch of runs score. Um, McCullers pitched six innings for the Astros. He had eight Ks. He also gave up two home runs, um, three runs total, and he had like four walks. So serviceable. Like he he did fine. Yeah. Um, Friday, the Astros beat your Blue Jays. Yeah. Um, Correa and Guriel both hit home runs. Um, okay, so Friday and Saturday, I think it was Friday. Nope, it was Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so Friday, anyways, 110 to 4 over the Blue Jays. Saturday, we lost to you guys. Um, yep. Alvarez hit another home run, though. Mm-hmm. Javier went five innings and gave up five runs, and then the bullpen gave up five runs. So that was that. Then Sunday <laughs> came around. We won seven to four. Um, and Grinky kind of got pieced up. He had, I didn't realize it was as bad as it was until I went and looked today. Um, he had nine hits and four runs, but then the bullpen came in and held it there, like mm-hmm. didn't give up any runs. So, yeah, kind of we got all those runs two, in one inning, I think. Four. Yeah, so. it was like a tale of two stories as far as the bullpen goes between Saturday and Sunday. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I, Altuve got, I, he got a hit or a home run in that Yan- last in that Yankee series. He got one on Sunday. And I think that might have been, I don't think he hit any other ones, but, but He's kind of like coming back around, I guess, from when he was out for his COVID stuff. Yeah. He's ramping back, back up. And like I said, your Ron Alvarez is just literally on another planet right now. It's insane. Yeah. It's so it's and crazy. And yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm excited for the Astros. They're still already because they're horrible bless. Do we want to do a draft with just us? Or do we just want to talk about uniforms? Because um, I have a bunch to talk about, actually. Yeah, let me do... I want to do my kick-ass lady and the Blue Jays oh, yes. kick-ass first. Um, but as far as Blue Jays go, that Houston series was the first series loss since April 17th for us. So it's <laughs> been... A good month overall. Um, Danny Jansen hit the longest home run of his career on Saturday, 448 feet. Alejandro Kirk was placed on the 60-day IL for a left hip flexor strain. Words. Mm. Um, So that's not great. Chicken Strip was in on Friday. He did... He's been kind of not good this year. Um, He's had like one or two good starts, but other than that... Friday, he w- went 3.2 innings, six hits, three runs, three walks, and three strikeouts. Not great. Um, no J got more than one hit on Friday. That wasn't fun. Um, and then Sunday was the game that Granky pitched, and Nate Pearson made his debut for us. 
I, I can't imagine making a debut against That's Zach Greinke. Yeah. Um, anyway, so he went two and a third innings pitched, four hits, three runs, five walks, and no strikeouts. So it's not what he wanted, but it's his debut. I'm not going to hold it against the kid. Yeah. You do you. Um, you'll get better. And he, and um, oh, the Guriel brothers, their mom was there yesterday. Did you oh, see the picture of her in like the half? Yes, half the jersey. split jersey. That it was, was so cute. cute. It never even dawned on me that our Lourdes Guriel and, and your yeah, Guriel. Same. Because like be ours, Lourdes is a junior. So in my yeah. mind, that's like, oh, that's a different name. When obviously yeah. it's not, but I'm done. Yeah, so. but still. <laughs> But it was really cute. Um, so I, I wonder what it's like cheering for your children when they're on teams facing each other. I don't know. Hopefully, I don't have to deal with Can't that. Imagine. Yeah, uh, I say I don't have. I will never have to deal with that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. Harper's gonna. <laughs> she's gonna be beating up she some told boys. Me, she asked me a couple days ago if she can play for the Dodgers. I was like, well, no. I mean, no. You can play for another also, MLB no, team, not them. But like maybe, yeah. But like maybe another one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and for the kick-ass lady of the week, Beth Mowens became the first woman to call a regular season Cubs game. At this past weekend, she did like the whole weekend series. Uh, she was in for, uh, Giambi, I think is his name. Um, she was born May 26, 1967 in Syracuse, New York. And as a kid, she liked to call the play-by-play of action while she was like playing with her friends in the neighborhood. Like she would narrate everything that was happening. Oh, that's cute. Adorable. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then when she was younger, she saw Phyllis George working as a sportscaster on the NFL Today show on CBS. And she says that that lit her spark. And she asked her mom if that was something that she could do someday. And her mom said, yes, you can. So she went on to do all sorts of stuff. And bring it up quick. Very prepared. (laughs) (laughs) So she went to college um, at Lafayette and then got a master's at Syracuse University, I'm assuming in broadcasting. I couldn't actually find what her degree was in, but I'm assuming that's what it was. Yeah. Um, She began her career in 91 as a news and sports director for a radio um, pro or channel station in Homer, New York, and is one of the 2009 inductees into the Greater Syracuse Sports Hall of Fame, which is awesome. She joined ESPN in 94. She covered college sports, including basketball, football, softball, soccer, and volleyball. So she was busy all the time. All the sports. Got it. <laughs> all the year. Uh, she was the lead voice on softball coverage on that network, uh, including the Women's College World Series. She has gone through a whole list of hosting for ESPN stuff. Um, In 2015, she became the play-by-play voice for the Oakland and later Las Vegas Raiders um, because they moved a few years ago, which I still call them the Oakland Raiders. It still hasn't processed for me yet. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I do too, to be honest. Yeah, she's done a lot of football. um, And then this past weekend, she made history with the Cubs. So I think that was really awesome. I saw... um, a few Cubs fans like posting screenshots of like her in the booth and stuff. And like, it was, it was really cool. So good on Beth. She's awesome. awesome. Goals. She belongs. Does. Belongs in sports. And I guess we don't need to do a whole draft. Um, but I, yeah, we can talk about, like, our favorite retro jerseys. I was about to say, what's your favorite outside the Braves? I know, and we... T- if you're the outside picking... the Braves stipulation was so rude. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, because the Braves is literally the best. How are you going to have the best without the best? But whatever, it's fine. Um, But mine, I think, mine has to be the the Reds 56, their sleeveless jerseys. Get That's my number two. I love those. Yeah. And the, like when whenever they do those throwback jerseys, I just love them. 
they're so cool looking. Um, and not just because I like arms. That's only a perk. They're just legitimately cool looking. And the little red icon, like his little hurt. hat stuff, is, is cool. Um, what about you? Yes. <laughs> okay, so my number one pick is kind of like polarizing. Shocking, I know. Because some people hate these jerseys, but I love them. And it's the Astros rainbow jerseys. Oh, oh. yeah. I'm in the hate oh, club of fucking those. Fucking love <laughs> these. I love them so much. And oh. like, if I was an act, like if I was an actual Astros fan, not just like a Zach Greinke fan, I would probably buy one. But I'm not, so I won't. Sure, he's more. But I have his jersey. I but. fucking love. And I mean, another that one that I found. You either love or hate those. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Because um, a lot of Astros fans don't even like them, but I think they're amazing. Like, I love the, uh, the rainbow and the star and the, it's just, I love all of it. But also, my favorite current Astros jersey is the navy with the rainbow down the sides. Mm-hmm. So, really, I think I just have something for that, those stripes. I don't know. Yeah. But I also, my Another one that I really liked was the Reds vest, mm-hmm. but then the um another one that's probably somewhat love or hate for the most part is the Pirates the Bumblebee ones. Oh yeah, from the yeah, I, I love don't those. <laughs> <laughs> they have, but oh, again, my father in law loves those, loves them, and like he has one of those like hats, the little hats, know. yeah, the little like yeah, he has one know. of those. Um, which they that style of hat looks good on the little Mr. Reds, but um, doesn't I, I just don't like it. But the book I'm reading right now, it's um, it's called the Pittsburgh Cocaine Seven, and it's actually, which is a hell of a title, first of all. Yeah, but it's actually fun. about the the pirates in the '80s, um, and all of the cocaine that they did. Um, and that was like the pictures in the book. Let's see if I can find one for you quick. The one is them the one guy wearing that uniform. Well, I guess not that uniform, but that hat. And yeah, I'm like, oh my God. So, um, also yeah. that shout- mustache is top, top, top notch. So, so 80s. Um, yeah, I'll be reviewing that on Patreon when I'm done with it. Shout out to that book. Um, but yeah, the, the that whole era, like all of those. Yeah, uh, when life. I made, when I made my list, all of my favorites were from like 70s to like 85. Yeah, I think my... Which I guess, I mean, I guess that's retro. Well, except the Reds one. That's from like the 50s. But all yeah. the rest of them. Because like I love the 1986 Mets. The love that. I love the Phillies Powder Blue. Yeah. Duh. That one's on mine too. My, the latest one I have is the 80 to 91 row jersey for the Expos. That was one I have. Yeah. Uh, I think my next favorite, though, is... What is it called? It's the Rockies Turn Ahead the Clock jersey. Have you seen that before? So I'm, no, oh, I but I love that. Latest one. that. This is the latest one I lied. It's from, like, 98. So I pretty- rock the shit on that. That's... I'm not... I don't know. I it's on that. a list of worst jerseys of all time. And I'm like, sure. what? That- it's cool. There's the whole mountain. Say, because stuff. I've seen the hat with like that mountain and the baseball yeah. logo on it. Like the Rockies still sell a hat with that that looks like that, and I love yeah. that hat. So turn ahead the clock because they did it for like a in like the late '90s. They were like, oh, let's look forward to the next millennium, which was all the rage. If y'all remember, I mean, yeah. I know you do, but sorry. I don't know how long, young some of our listeners are, but um, it was a wild time. It was it was a lot of yeah. Of fear for no reason too, but yeah, that one, the Reds, the Phillies powder blue. I love blue and maroon, so I think I'm just, I'm just kind of a sucker for that blue. Actually, navy and maroon was my wedding colors, so always love that. And then the Expos one is, I mean, you can't go oh, wrong. I like that. Yeah. So Very the cool. A's in the '70s had a solid yellow jersey that I also really liked. That I had never seen before today. 
But I think it just liked it because it's so. <laughs> I mean, it's like solid, yeah. bright ass Oakland maze yellow. Mm-hmm. Solid yellow. Yeah, I yeah. love it. It's loud, but it's good. I, I, I do like that one, actually. Um, All right, guys. Everything that we needed to cover today. Oh, okay. That's think- kind of it. Um, This will be up tomorrow. Today's Monday the 10th. This will be up Tuesday the 11th, as usual, back on our regular schedule, despite life and technology really not wanting us <laughs> to be. trying against uh, us. Literally everything today. This has been a whole ass Monday, like a whole. Mo- I'm scared of what tomorrow's gonna bring. I wasn't planning uh, on Wednesday. Today. My mind's almost gone. So, yeah, I mean, like, there you go. shit has happened. <laughs> um, on Wednesday, you'll have the MBE YouTube will be up, and M H E YouTube and podcast will be up. May. Maybe, who knows? I'm not really sure if Apple still hates us or not. Definitely they might. On Spotify. But if they do, listen to us on Spotify or watch our faces on YouTube because that's much better, anyways, if we're going to be honest. And then Fridays is normally Electron Ladies drop. Hopefully, this week allows us to record and we can maybe finish up my season and move on to Emily's because mine has been drawn, drug out for like six months, it feels like. And that's kind of it. And we will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye, guys.